Adiós. Hola. Bye. Yo, chao, yo, yo. Yo no fui Cyborg. ¿Did you? Tú has dicho que registrar, ¿no? Many of you have already attended our our media debrief, our press conferences. So I hope that you know more or less how it works. Anyway, just let me make a little recap. So I already have um, a list of questions that have been sent to me previous the beginning of all of this. And uh, so after after a short introduction by Davide, we will go through. I will open the mic to. Um, to these questions in order that, that they came. Uh, just a couple of things. I have already enabled recording from um, to all of you that asked. So if anyone is not able, please type in the chat. So from now on, the only way to, to talk with me is through the chat. Um, I We will start in English and then we will do also in, in Italian. So you will have the time to make all your questions. Just one thing that I I want to ask you. I mean, um, we are here to basically inform you and update you about the latest news from Suzuki, and we are happy to answer all your questions. And we just just ask you to focus on our situation, Suzuki and uh, Suzuki riders, and so just not to to involve any any other riders and their situation, their respective teams. So, um, we can start, I think, Davide, welcome, uh, first of all, and thank you for joining Hi. us. Ciao a tutti, eh? hello to everybody, long and time, we don't see. <laughs> if you can just make a little introduction, a little comment about the situation, and of course the news that Suzuki uh, signed a contract with, uh, with both uh, Alex and, and Joan. Yeah, okay, well, what to say about the situation, I think... Uh, Every everybody's in the same situation and uh, what we are doing, what I'm doing, we also try to, of course, to be in contact with uh, MotoGP, with Dorna, with Irta, and also with the other team. We have a few meetings all together. And also we are looking at the other sport to see what's going on, what's happening in the football, uh, in the various country. Everybody we can see is taking different, uh, different, uh, directions, different positions. And uh, of course, now we're looking at, in Germany, they're going to restart the football next week. And uh, Spain and Italy still to decide. So this is important, in my opinion, because this can maybe trace a road, you know, trace a way also for the other sport that can follow. And uh, okay, as, as has been said, the target of Dorna is to start uh, on, in July in, uh, in Spain. So, of course, we have to hope that the situation will improve by, by then because there is something that is not in our hands. It's in the hands of the local government where we're going to race. So, in order to start the championship in Spain, I imagine that the Spanish authority has to allow us to travel there, has to allow us to, to stay in, uh, in, in Jerez. And uh, despite the number of people will be as limited as possible for each team. We're talking about, you know, over a thousand, a thousand people in the paddock. So the Jerez, the Jerez uh, city authority, the Spanish government, everybody they have to accept that. So anyway, we have a couple of months. I, I hope I'm quite confident that maybe we can, uh, we, can, uh, we can solve and we can improve the situation. For instance, in Italy, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we restarted what they call in uh, phase due, you know, the phase two. And if the things will be good in one, in one week, 10 days, then maybe we can look with more confidence with the future. So 
we are all we are all trying to to, to study to understand the situation and uh, and see. Of course, uh, as far as concerned, the, the the MotoGP championship in this moment, we look in mainly what's happening in Spain, in Italy, and Austria, where is probably we we going to race. So the the, the championship, as you know, it will be limited quite limited to a few countries. So. In order to have everything going well, we have to make sure that in this country, the, the COVID situation is, let's say, okay, I mean, manageable, and the local authority will allow us to, to be there. So that's what, uh, what, uh, what we are doing. Okay, so um, we will start with Adam. Adam, you're now unmuted, so you can go on with your question. Out there with you. Um, I just wanted to know what you thought about the, the technical freeze um, on development for the next two seasons. Um, and also, you know, are there any other solutions for saving costs, do you think? Um, maybe, you know, should a, a MotoGP weekend of Saturday, Sunday instead of Friday, Saturday, Sunday be, be more serious now? Yeah, I have to say that uh, uh, we have been, uh, we, have, we have had uh, f a few meetings all all together, the six manufacturers, and it was quite, uh, I mean, it was, it was very interesting, quite productive meetings. I can feel the, a big cooperation between all of us, the big, uh, let's say, intention of find a solution for the good of the championship. Especially, okay, you remember after the last year in Qatar, the MSMA was a little bit stuck, and uh, okay, in the, in, in the negative situation that is uh, this uh, where we are now, let's say we restarted to talk each other, and uh, and I have to say that all all my colleagues, all our teams, all our let's say competitor manufacturers, uh, we had a very productive meeting. So the first of all, freezing the engine and freezing the development mainly. I think it was the right decision because we also were in a situation which was a little bit imbalanced. At a certain point, the, the European company, especially Italian company, Ducati, Aprilia, they were forced to close. And in Japan, even if slower or with not, not at the full pace, but they could continue to work. And this would have been, let's say, uh, not fair. So we were all agreed on making things more equal and to, to balance uh, this situation. So that's why we freeze. Of, of course, this is also another opportunity to save cost because also now this is another problem that everybody has. And uh, the, 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 the budget available will be less and less, will be less for this year and probably will be less for next year. So freezing the development is one way to save some budget and to try to to, to survive. I mean, honestly, we have said a few times this word, no, that we have to find all the way to survive. So, stop development is the first, uh, I think, uh, the first, uh, the first step for this. Then, what can we do to save the cost? We went through different, uh, let's say, proposal or solution. Uh, of course, the, the biggest expenses are the uh, the development, the development of the parts and the technical. The technical costs and uh, another cost is also let's say has been talked I read in the media also talking about the contracts the riders the personnel because this is also what they doing in the other sport in the football they are reducing contract with the, the, the football player but as you see in a football this is something that uh, you cannot manage let's say all together or as a kind of a regulation this is these are individual contract, individual agreement, and every company has its own philosophy and his, his own problem. So this is not something, it's something that maybe everybody has to work by himself according to their resources and their, their philosophy. Other way, we also consider maybe to have uh, in the future a shorter weekend or for, for double reason, to reduce the cost, maybe to spend less time uh, uh, away and also to reduce the time away for safety issue for uh, for the healthy because i mean anyway more time you stay outside more people together the risk increase so we didn't we didn't really came out with uh, uh, a precise proposal yet 
but I think uh, after uh, stopping development, we are all we are all uh, open and available to, to to consider any solution. There are a couple of things that now that will be discussed in the GP Commission. Uh, let's say not big things, but everything oriented to making the competition fair and to save the cost and to reduce the number of people in the paddock and things like that. So that's all for the moment. For the moment, it's uh, only freezing the development. But then Dorna and all the manufacturers, we are all agree that uh, we need to discuss more and uh, to go more in detail and see what we can do in the future. But I think everybody is open to that. It's in everybody's interest now. That's it, everything. Okay, thank you, Adam. And we will switch to uh, Michelle. Let me find you in the list. Michelle, can you try speaking? I can't see him in on in line. So we will move to Pete, waiting for Michelle to come back. Hi, David. Hi. Uh, Ciao. Hi. Question is about the short season. Uh, you know, Marquez and Davizioso have been first and second in the championship for the last three years, but you know, do you think over a short season especially, we could see a surprise this year? Who might the surprises be? And what are the chances of the Suzuki riders causing an upset? Uh, I don't know, but I don't think uh, that having a short championship or long championship might change a lot. I think the, 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 the fast rider will always be the same. And uh, of course, there are a few, few, few variables this year because we have to see, uh, if this long stop has affected more somebody than, than others, I mean, if somebody is affected, but in terms of results or competition or whatever, I think will be pretty much the same. And, uh, okay, I try to make uh, an exercise by myself. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, taking what the races that we are supposed to do, I mean, there is a rough idea which type of races could be. Maybe we go two times in Jerez and we might go two times in Austria. I don't know. Just, I mean, something uh, what we can think now and maybe talking about around 10 races and whatever. But more or less, if you take the results of last year and put it into exactly the same into this year, maybe double the result of Jerez, double the result of Austria, whatever, whatever more or less the situation of the championship will be very similar. So I don't think this is uh, going to change, uh, going to change much. Of course, maybe it's more important to not make a mistake because there are few races to recover mistakes. You know, maybe in a, let's say in the normal situation, if, uh, if you had a bad early season and maybe have some crashes or something, then in the second half of season, you can recover. You can see, for instance, last year, uh, Vinales, he has a difficult start of season. He was very strong on the, on the end of season and he, he got back. And so uh, these type of things, but for the top two or three, three position, I think probably will be not the same, but quite similar what it will be in the full, in the full championship. And then of course, I hope uh, Suzuki can be the surprise, but I hope Suzuki won't be any more a surprise because, uh, because uh, I think last year what we missed probably was the end of the championship. We weren't, we weren't so strong as we were in the first half of the season, but uh, we could finish better than where we finish at the end of the season. So I think uh, uh, we, we just have to maintain more constant results this year. And uh, so maybe having, having a short-term championship can be a good training from this point of view. But again, we have to see what is the situation when we restart. When we arrive in July, after almost six months that nobody got on a MotoGP bike, uh, we hope, I mean, with Dorna, we are discussing that we need one day testing. It looks like it does is possible. So we will do one day testing probably, then go straight to the race weekend. So this also, the, 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 the shape of the rider, the spirit of adaption, who is, very, who is 
more quick to adapt, it uh, will have an advantage. You can see in the history of the last years, many times uh, the first few races are not very significant for the rest of the championship, for many riders maybe, no? for few riders. Here you have to be concentrated, you have to be in the best shape for three, four months and play everything. So from this point of view, it's something new and also I would say interesting. I mean, this is what it is. This year is a special year for everything and uh, we will see. It's a, it's a good test, but I don't think, I think we will see the top five, six riders uh, fighting for the victory as, I mean, doesn't matter how many races we have in a calendar. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's try again with Michelle. Now your mic should be open. But no, I, I see you talking, but we can't hear you. So I have your question here. So if you don't mind, I will report your question. David, the question from Michelle were two. The first one was, uh, what could be, in your opinion, the 2020 championship? And how do you see the future of MotoGP considering the impact of this crisis on the economic world, but also on the mind of the people about the necessity to be closer to environmental matters? Yeah. yeah, of course, we talk now about the 2020 championship from, let's say, sport point of view, from riders point of view. Of course, it will be strange because uh, when we will restart, there will be no public. Uh, the paddock will be quite empty, but this is something only for, for us, you know, for the people working there. There will be no, part, no, no public on a grandstand, it will be strange atmosphere and this is, uh, okay, this is what it is. And we know, we know where we, in which situation we are and I think we have to be open to, to accept everything we have. So for sure it will be strange. Uh, from many point of view, but uh, in any case, we hope we hope we can we can have some championship. We can restart and we can have a, a races for the future. Uh, yeah, this is a big question mark because uh, uh, I think everybody will have probably less resources. I mean, the MotoGP championship, let's say, is very much related to the manufacturer because in reality, the manufacturer are the biggest. Uh, let's say the biggest sponsor of of, the, of every team. I mean, of course, Suzuki that we have also not commercial sponsor, not so many commercial sponsor, but everybody else has the factory behind that is the main, uh, the bring the main financial support. And now, of course, nobody's selling bikes and uh, nobody's selling products. And um, even Suzuki, we are a car manufacturer other than motorcycle. We are a marine engine. Uh, manufacturer, but we're not selling cars. We're not selling marine engines. So all the companies will be, will have to reduce the cost. Okay. And uh, so it's difficult now to say what is the impact because even within, within the company, we always try to make some estimation, some forecast uh, every day or every week, but then the next week you have to change or next week, you're not sure what you have calculated. So I think we need a little bit to stabilize the situation. And uh, maybe in some country, the business is restarting, the dealerships, uh, the dealers are opening the shops, and we will see the effect in a few weeks if something is going to restart. I imagine that for sure, everybody will have uh, less budget next year. Uh, we have to reduce probably some cost. And uh, that's why also freezing the development is a good way to go. And uh, that's why I took as a, a fantastic, uh, I mean, a fantastic news from our company, the fact that we could renew the agreement of uh, Alex and Joan in this period, because this happened in the last, uh, let's say two, three weeks, whatever, last month, not more than a month where we signed the contract. And this went through, of course, the approval of our top management. And to see our top management in this delicate situation to approve the extension of the contract for 21, 22, I took like a, a, a very good sign. I mean, it, look, it make us looking with confidence to the future. You know, it means also the company is committed to, to keep going, okay, the MotoGP activity, but let's say to keep going the normal activity, I would say, you know, maybe continue thinking in a normal way. So this gives us a lot of hope, uh, but of course we have to see in the next month, 
how, how the situation will be. Of course, it won't be, I think 2021, 22, it won't be 18, 19 or 17 situation. We will have probably to go like uh, we have done 10 years ago. I mean, this crisis seems to be much bigger, but like when we had the crisis 2008, 2009, we slow down and then slowly, slowly go back. Probably here we will slow down more, more than that, and then slowly try to get back. It's difficult to, to forecast, but uh, everybody now is thinking how to save money or to save budget for the next year. But everybody is, I can see, very much committed to, to keep going. Okay, thank you. Next in line is David. Now you should be able to speak. Um, uh, hi, Davide. Um, my question sort of carries on a little bit from what you were just saying that um, uh, about how Suzuki sees the uh, sees MotoGP now. Obviously, sales have fallen. The sales we know that MotoGP is a very important promotional tool as well, important marketing tool. How does this crisis affect the way that Suzuki sees? Um, MotoGP and, and, the, and its investment in MotoGP uh, and what does this mean for uh, for example a satellite team uh, uh, in the future the, is that kind of expansion uh, out of that I mean does it help sell more bikes or does it is it just something which is a cost yeah it's difficult now to say I mean I I, I didn't hear from the company again I mean a strategy looking for the future as I say we are all working more or less uh, day by day. I mean, I say I'm happy for the renewal of the agreement because it, it shows the commitment. I mean, the willing to look at the future and to continue to do the business. And uh, how Suzuki see in this moment the MotoGP is difficult for me to say. Uh, but as I say, I, I, get, I, I receive a sign that there is the willing to, to keep everything going. And uh, we, we've been asked to to, to save my budget for this year, to try to reduce our cost. I mean, on certain point of view, at the moment, it's still, I, I won't say easy, but okay, we can manage because not traveling, not racing automatically, we save in some budget. So, well, this will be now review, reviewing budgets and reviewing costs, try to make an estimation how the budget will be and things like that. For sure, this year we will spend less, but of course the business is also much less for the company. So this is not a, a, a real benefit. But as I say, to renew the contract with the riders give me the, the hopes that uh, the MotoGP is still considered important. And uh, then you're talking about uh, satellite team. <laughs> this, uh, I don't know. This is something that uh, we had an idea to do this for 2022. And this is still, still on the table. And I think, uh, I mean, for the moment we were concentrate on discussing the riders' agreement. Now I think maybe we try to come a little bit down to let the top management work a little bit on uh, most Im more important issues for the companies. And maybe in a few weeks or a couple of months, I don't know, maybe we will try to get back and bring back the discussion on the table and see how is the situation and uh, how is their intention. Uh, for us, it's still, still open. I mean, it's still, it's still a project we're working on and our racing department still wants to do. But of course, we have to go through the, the approval of top management. And I mean, it's difficult to say now. We have to wait and see. But we continue to work on that. That's for sure. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. Now it's time for Lucho Lopez. If I yeah. talk too much, stop me. <laughs> <laughs> Lucio, you're next. Okay. Um, going back to the support uh, questions um, that could affect, of course, to the to the uh, sponsorship and and all the investment that Suzuki has to do. Um, do you think that this calendar that that Dorna is is proposing, uh, repeating races at the same circuit, it could be uh, positive or a negative for for Suzuki because uh, obviously uh, Austria is a is a track that uh, Ducati loves so much not not as much for for Suzuki. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, 
if you think pro from this point of view, of course, we don't want to race twice in Austria, <laughs> but, uh, but probably will happen. And uh, for instance, we don't have a, a race in Assen <laughs> where we feel we're very strong. And uh, we're not going to race in Silverstone where we, we won twice in, uh, in the last uh, four or five years. But okay, that's, uh, that's the way it is, uh, you know. And um, this year you have, you have to accept uh, what it is. We cannot, we cannot think about, oh, we don't like Austria. Uh, but then, I mean, somebody will be very strong in Austria and maybe will be less strong in Jerez. So at the end of the day, to do two races in the same circuit is one of the solution to be able to carry on the championship and to finish the championship. So we, we, we have to accept and uh, we have to, to be prepared for that. So then, okay, if we, we're going to do 10 races or 12 races in the championship, okay, Austria will be two. Okay, let's try to, <laughs> let's try to recover in the, other, in, the other, in the other circuit. But also, recover is, is, is not the right word because we go to Austria with the full intention to fight. Of course, it's a circuit where maybe Ducati has won many times and uh, basically Dovizioso and Marquez are always strong, but okay. I mean, uh, uh, Yama scored a podium in Austria and uh, why can't we do that? So you have to accept. I mean, of course, maybe for some manufacturer it's not good to race twice in Jerez, for somebody it's not good to race twice in Austria, somebody maybe in Aragon will suffer more and and maybe we might have two races there. I don't know now the calendar how it will be, but that's the 2020. I mean, 2020 is special. And, um, and as I say, also, I was very happy because also talking with the other MSMA manufacturer, when you talk about solution, possibility, we also say, I mean, was also one of our, let's say, proposal, but then, I mean, Dorna, of course, they did because they, 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 they thought also by themselves, but we say if we have to race, two times in the same circuit, let's do. If we have to race, if we have to make two races in the same weekend, okay, let's do. We were quite open to do anything. And in all this discussion, I would say, I never felt somebody talking about, thinking about his own interest, let's say, uh, you know, but everybody talking about in the interest of the championship. So in the interest of the championship, now we might need to race twice in the same circuit, let's do. So that's all. And, uh, and then we have to try to manage and then we will see. But 2020 is, uh, will be special. It's a special and uh, we will take what it comes. Okay, um, thank you, Davide. And let's switch to Imre. Just a second. Imre, now you can talk. Yes. Uh, ciao, Davide. Uh, ciao. So I, w I wanted to ask how many of the technicians from the Moto Suzuki MotoGP team are situated in Italy? How many are in Japan? How do they communicate at the moment? And when the whole thing will start again, uh, are you considering putting them all in the same place uh, for the time being? Yeah, now, okay, I don't remember exactly the number, yes, but majority is probably stay in Italy. Of the, of the team. We have mainly Italy, Spain. Uh, we have a guy in England, uh, uh, one guy in France, and of course the, the, the Japanese, Japanese staff, about six, seven people in, in Japan, included SMC employee and a contract guy. So we are, uh, uh, let's say, spread in five or six countries. Um, now at the moment, the, the situation is not clear because also looking at the various uh, uh, regulation of the old company, uh, all the old countries. Uh, for instance, if you if you want to come in Italy now, you have to stay in a quarantine for two weeks. And uh, also, if you're not Italian or certain category, if you are just a simple passenger, you can stay only 72 hours in Italy. Uh, I mean, that's what I understood <laughs> going through the various websites and everything and regulation. So then, of course, we have a, a long time to to make sure. So in this moment, looks like the, you have to come a little bit early in Europe, have a quarantine before to go to Jerez, if you come from outside of Europe. If you are within Europe, so for Italian people, French, Spanish, probably England, uh, German, uh, whatever, it doesn't matter. I mean, for working reason, you can move to Spain. 
you should be allowed to reach Spain without a quarantine because you are an European uh, resident, let's say. So probably the Japanese staff has to come earlier in Europe, do the quarantine, and then go to Jerez, or probably go to Jerez, stay in hotel for the quarantine, and then get out of the hotel and go to the circuit. I mean, we are, we are waiting for Dorna. They are also uh, defining a protocol. They are uh, preparing a medical protocol with all these instructions for all the staff. So this is the situation. Then, of course, we have to try to stay all together as much as possible. What I think, I feel like the team probably has to become a kind of a family. It's like now, everybody of us, we are locked down with our family in our house. And uh, like you are, you have a contact with your family. Because, I mean, inside the team, it's difficult to keep social, social distance. I mean, we, it's difficult to keep mechanics two meters away one from the other. Yeah. Or to keep the rider two meters away from his engineer or whatever, you know? So, I mean, three mechanics, they have to work on a bike. I can stay two meters from mechanics, probably. And uh, I, have, I can shout if I have to talk to them. But if they have to work on a bike, the bike is small, you know, they cannot keep it. So, so there are some, that's why we are very interested to listen to the, the, the medical protocol. And then we will discuss and we have to adapt all our job. But I think once the team arrive at the circuit, it's like a family. It looks like we, can, we have to do the test before to arrive at the circuit. Uh, if everything is negative, we will go into the circuit. Once we're there, the team has to stay close in the garage, or at least garage and truck in that area, like it's uh, in lockdown, like it's a, one family in a lockdown, more or less. And then, uh, yeah, you have to try to manage this. I mean, let's make clear, it's impossible to have zero risk, I think, you know? I mean, that's my opinion. It's impossible to not have a risk. The medical protocol try to avoid risks because otherwise, if we want zero risks, I think we have to stay in lockdown until probably the vaccine is coming in the next 18 months, you know? So probably by maybe end of 2021, we can get out from our house and uh, start a normal life after we got the vaccine. Otherwise, we have to try to, to reduce the risk. So that's what we will try to do, to get together, stay close, each other to avoid as much as possible uh, the, the contact with the, the, the other people in the paddock. I mean, it won't be like uh, you go around the paddock and have a chat and discuss and, uh, you know, communicate or in the evening, uh, uh, relax and meet friends or whatever. So probably that's not, uh, that's not uh, the life for this year. Work in the garage, probably take the lunch box uh, have a meal, have a lunch, have a dinner, go back to hotel, go to sleep, and next morning come back to the circuit. That's that's the life for this day, for that day, I think. And uh, so we have, uh, let's say, the, now it looks like we're going to, to Jerez in the middle of July. We have this couple of months to to adjust, to study these protocols, to to adjust our our uh, behaviors, our way to act and then uh, to be ready for when it's time to, to, to get there. Okay, thank you. And now we go with Simon Patterson. Just let me open your mic. Simon, Hello, you're on. Hi. Hi. So. Uh, I think some of us were expecting that this year you would maybe have a, a little bit of a fight on your hands to keep both your riders, because we know that a lot of the other manufacturers were interested in them, but it seems like the the, the process was very straightforward and the, the contract negotiations were easy. That is uh, must be a, a nice feeling because it shows where your team and your bike are at now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, the negotiation, I would say, was quite easy <laughs> because... Um, uh, Alex, uh, to be very honest, he showed already the interest to remain with us since last, probably 12 months ago. I mean, first of all, I have to say you something. <laughs> um, last year, by around this time, April, no, April, I think, um, 
I went to Japan uh, to have uh, one of the meetings. I was used to go to Japan a few times in a year to have meetings. And already by then, uh, with our management, we discussed it about, okay, what we're going to do for the, the renewal of the agreements. Of course, we had a, an year ahead, but I wanted to try to understand if we have an opinion and whatever. At the end of that discussion, everybody of us, we were happy to continue with Rins and Mir for 22, 20, 21, 22. This was already a year ago. That was our target, our idea. Okay. And uh, almost in the same time, more or less, Alex came to us and say, look, I mean, I would like to stay. I would like to, to, to continue with Suzuki, even 21, 22. If you're happy, we can, we can sign the agreement now. And uh, of course, we were happy to do. But then, I mean, difficult to explain, but the, how our company works was a little bit, I mean, something weird and strange to go to our president in May or June or July 2019 and say, we have to sign an agreement for the 21, you know? And uh, it would take, uh, probably it's right, because uh, I mean, looking what's up, what can happen, you know, <laughs> it's better to go uh, more step by step. But anyway, it was difficult. So we had to wait, let's say, the right time according to our company procedure. I mean, in, during 19, you think still about 2020 season. Then when the 20 season is about to start, you can start to talk about 21, things like that. But let's say in our mind, with Alex, we were already agree. I mean, as a racing department, uh, we were happy to keep Alex. Then about John, also we talked to him uh, already back middle of last year and we say, look, I mean, we're very happy. We would like to continue. We would like to make a, uh, let's say, a long time project. And uh, so we were happy with Alex and John. We didn't see any reason to change and we also thought stability will pay off in the future. And John always, always show his interest to stay. When John, to be honest, was a little bit easier because we had an option. So right, okay. we could exercise an option on John. So let's say with John, we were a little bit more relaxed, let's say, <laughs> to be honest, uh, because uh, we had an option to exercise. With Alex, okay, we, we got his, let's say, verbal commitment that he wanted to stay. Then it took long time inside the company to, to find the right way and to get to the real, I mean, to signature, to put the signature of top management on, on the paper. But that's all. I mean, it's only bureaucratic. But as I say, from long, long time, uh, we were agree. But oh, I, I'm, I mean, I'm the first one that until I don't see the, the, the signature on a paper, I'm not, I'm not sure. That's why I always see, I always say to you for many months, we would like to keep them. I think they want to stay and I hope this will happen. I hope we can do because I want to see the signature on the paper. That's all. So that's, that's, uh, that's what it took. And we're very happy. We're very happy because we achieve our target. And uh, I really think uh, that uh, Alex, uh, Alex already show he can win a race. He's uh, within the top riders in a MotoGP. John, I think, has the potential to become at that level. And uh, I think, I mean, our target, we will see in the future, but our target is to have two riders that can stay in a top five, top six position in the championship and play within that position. You can be first, you can be third, you can be fourth, you can be second, you can be sixth, you know, within, with, of course, the, the other rider that everybody knows that are strong. But our idea, our target is to put two of our riders into the group. And make them fighting and see what's happening. Okay, thank, thank you. Very you. Much. We, go, we go for the last one in English with Jack. Jack, you now you can speak. Thank you very much. Hi, David. I hope you're okay. Hi. Uh, just no. two, two quick ones from me. Uh, obviously, with Mark having signed a, a four-year deal, was there any interest from either Suzuki or John and Alex to look at a contract of that length as well? Uh, and secondly. Was there a plan B in place in case either, <coughs> excuse me, Joanne and Alex were looking at moving? And if so, which riders in Moto2 or maybe Moto3 do you think would have fit Suzuki's bike and fit Suzuki's 
family atmosphere? Uh, but we, no, honestly, we never thought about uh, such a long -term contract, but just because, honestly, I mean, market signing four years agreement was a kind of unusual thing, kind of a surprise, no? We are all used to go in a two years agreement and that's, that's what we think. Uh, of course, in our, in our intention is to keep going as long as possible with Alex and John. Alex also said, he said many times he would like to have a long career with Suzuki. Of course, we have to continue to provide a competitive bike, otherwise he will look some, somewhere else. And uh, so, let's say in this moment, there, is, there will be no obstacles or no, I mean, no problem to sign a longer contract. I'm afraid that probably for our company to sign four years agreement is something a little bit uh, special. So maybe it would have been more difficult to, to discuss and to explain, you know? So let's go step by step and I hope to sign another two years agreement for, for uh, 23, 24 again with Alex and John. So I would be very happy to do that. And uh, honestly, we never really think about, we never really thought about uh, uh, replacing or having a plan B. Of course, I had, uh, in the past month, I had uh, several chat, let's say, with uh, other riders' managers, because this is quite normal. I mean, you have to understand, our paddock is a small community, I mean, you know, and uh, I know all the MotoGP riders' manager, and I met them many times during the weekend, you know, probably, or many times during the year, and I have a chat with... Uh, uh, all of them, Alzamora, Battistella, uh, Mae, or I don't know, Paco Sanchez, which is also John Mir uh, manager or whatever, whatever, you know? Uh, and so it comes quite easy and natural. Maybe they ask, uh, how is your situation with the rider? I got this question many times. I say, okay, our target is to confirm Alex and John. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Let me know, keep me informed, things like that. So. I talk with all of them, but because we are friends also with few of them, we chat and we discuss, also we share, I mean, sometimes we share also, you know, comments, opinions, and uh, point of view with all of them. So I have a relationship with all of them. So let's say, if something would have gone wrong, maybe it was easy to pick up the telephone and call somebody, <laughs> but we never really, arrive to any negotiation or any any plan with any anybody of them let's say you know so of course i was more or less aware what everybody was doing i mean you know the paddock is small so you know that markets is going to stay you know that uh, quartararo was going to 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 renew with yama you knew that uh, okay uh, vinales wanted to stay but also ducati i mean these things you know but as our target was to keep Alex and John, I could not really start a proper negotiation or proper discussion when, you know, when, uh, when uh, they, they, they want to stay. So I was very, I, I think I was quite well informed. Or, I mean, I had the information I needed about everybody and maybe ready to react in case of any problem. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, guys. Now we switch to Italian, so of course, whoever of you wants to stay, it's okay. But Wondering about the testing and the wild cards, because we know how Guintoli is a valid part of your development of, of the team. Will there be any wild cards during this season? What will happen to the testing team during this year, next year, because there's no development? Yeah, in this moment, the test team is freezed because uh, we we not testing anywhere. We had uh, we had some testing plan in Jerez. We were supposed to test in March. Of course, we canceled. We had a test plan for uh, beginning of July, and we have to cancel because now with the race going on, it's too close to the race, and by regulation, you cannot test 14 before 14 days before. And uh, even in Japan, Motegi is closed, so there is nothing going on, you know. And uh, so for the moment, uh, the, the, the test team is, uh, is 
is stopped. With uh, Sylvain, we wanted to have uh, we wanted to race a, as a wild card in uh, Japan, Motegi. But we have to see. Probably we're not going to have a race in Motegi. I don't know. I mean, we we waiting for information. And uh, anyway, there is some discussion going on for the wild card. Whether is is uh, it's necessary to have a wild card this year or not? Because uh, um, I mean, in the intention to reduce the number of people inside the paddock, it will make sense to not have a wild card, which increase the number of people into the paddock. And uh, so uh, Dorna is discussing about that. And uh, so then we will see and uh, they will take a decision. Uh, they will take some decisions soon about that. But anyway, what we hope is that if in July we're going to restart the MotoGP season, maybe we can restart also the test team activity. So it's freeze. We have everything pending, ready to go, but doing nothing at the moment. We hope we can restart soon. May I ask just how many people are there in the team, the testing team that you need to bring to the paddock if there is a wild card? Probably could be around, I would say in our case, probably between eight and 10 people, I think. I would say 10, yeah. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, but as you know, as you know, we've been asked to limit the number of staff in every team and everything, so this is 10 more, but anyway. So I want to thank you everybody. I think that also David wants to thank you everybody for attending. Yeah, and maybe, sorry, maybe I, I talked too much, but okay, it was a pleasure anyway to talk to you. Maybe because we had to recover some time, not talking. And uh, anyway, okay, thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you. So thank you, thank you guys. And I hope you Grazie Davide. Grazie. 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 See you next time. Thank you and yeah. everybody take care. Yes. Oh. You too. Bye bye guys. Bye. 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 Bye.